Hello, American Heritage Girls. This is Patty Garibay, Executive Director and Founder of AHG, live from her house in Cincinnati. <laughs> I'm guessing a lot of you are in your homes today, but it is a pleasure to be with you. I just love that we're doing this. It's been far too long, and I'm excited to see all the different people that have joined us from all across the nation. It's exciting to see the girls introducing themselves to one another, and also for all the leaders uh, to be here as well. So it is it is a blessing to be with you. You know, these are these are difficult times for sure, and um, you know, so often we can either make these uh, times good memories or, or bad memories. And a lot of that is um, up to us. And so um, today we thought we would just do something really different. Um, we got to say, we, we love you guys so much. And it's so nice to be able to share with you, share our hearts and to be able to um, really share an important message um, with the AHG family today. So today kicks off our very first Medical Heroes Week. Uh, we felt it was so important to thank all of those in the health industry and any essential service people, grocery store clerks, uh, sanitation people. I mean, there's just so many people to be thankful for that have really kept us safe during this time. We also want to remember those that have been affected by this virus. We want to also remember our leaders of our country and our states. What a difficult job they must have right now. And I, and I hope that you're keeping all of those people, all of them in your prayers. I know I am. But I think it's so important that we remember not just the medical heroes, but also the great physician, which is Jesus. And we're going to talk a little bit about him and what we can do to keep ourselves emotionally and spiritually strong during this time. So all in all, the purpose of AHG's Medical Hero Week is we really wanted to give a gift to AHG families everywhere. And so we thought, how cool would it be if we pre-launched a new badge that was written by subject matter experts in the field, along with AHG staff and volunteers, and designed by Abigail. I hope you got to see her new design for the, the badge, uh, the medical badge. But I am hopeful that you all know that you can add a little something. You can actually be part of our live feed and be able to make some comments. For instance, how did you like the look of the design for the new handbook on your new medical badge? I think, I hope you thought it was awesome. Uh, we have an amazing artist, Becky Lips. Wanted to give a shout out to her for making the design so beautiful. And also um, just want to tell you, we're so excited about these new handbooks and I know you will be too. So let's just talk about that a little bit. Let's also talk about the fact that the medical field is one of intrigue, right? It's really raised awareness. We all know Dr. Fauci, don't we, by now? And Dr. Burks, they're our regular everyday on the TV heroes. But also, I wanted to let you know that we've got some special guests coming up this week. It is going to be very exciting on Wednesday to be able to talk to somebody from Samaritan's Purse, who is a medical missionary. Now that's pretty cool, a medical missionary. So this is somebody that has served in Togo and Zambia and places far, far away, as well as in the US. And he's going to share about his career. And then on Friday, we're gonna have one of our own, a troop coordinator from Tennessee, who has been a founding troop coordinator and is also an MD, a family physician. And so I hope you'll meet us for that as well, because we're going to have some live interviews, which will all help you to earn some of your requirements for your medical badge. Now, due to popular requests, we also have a special patch that you can purchase if you'd like on the AHG store. And we are doing pre-ordering. As you know, money is tight. It's really, really tight right now. So AHG wants to be the best stewards of our dollars. And so we're going to have patches made available to you on a pre-order basis. So if you go into our store, the AHG store, and you type in Medical Heroes Week, you'll see the patch popped up. And it might say something like sold out, but it's really not sold out. That's just sort of stuck in there when we can't get rid of it. 
But if you could put how many, or the fact that you're interested and when they come in that you'd like to order some, we can order just the right amount and not over order or under order because we wanna be good stewards. That makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Uh, let's see, what else did I wanna tell you? Hmm. I wanted to make sure you commented online, the new handbook design, welcome everyone. And that's pretty much it. So we'll get, we'll just jump right in. It's gonna be a good week. I'm glad to be with you. You know, we uh, have a lot uh, to talk about today. And, and one of the things I wanted to talk about, it was a little bit about the medical bag. It's part of the requirements I know for the medical badge is to talk a little bit about the medical bag. And um, medical bags have been around for a really, really long time. You may have heard of a Greek physician named Hippocrates. You may have even heard of the Hippocratic Oath of which every physician still today takes before they serve as a physician. Well, Hippocrates lived in Greece in 400 BC. That's 400 years around before Christ. So he had a medical bag. That was the first mention of a medical bag. And today, medical bags are a variety of, of looks. But what we all know them best by is being a leather kind of bag that opens up from the top. And it typically has a split handle. And even during the Civil War, they would put these medical bags on saddlebags, and the horses would obviously bring them to the wounded on this, the fields of Civil War. And I know we have a lot of people here from Virginia, and so I know that there is a whole lot of Civil War battlefields in that area amongst the other parts of the East Coast of America. But in these uh, 19th century bags, you would find all kinds of what were considered medical advances at the time within the bag. Uh, there was typically a stethoscope and a scalpel. That always scares me because when you see some of the surgeries that they did back in the 19th century, ooh, no wonder they said to bite on a bullet. That looked pretty rough. Uh, bandages, syringes, a thermometer, a tongue depressor, and percussion hammers. That was a typical thing to have. Now today, a physician's medical bag would have a whole lot more, and needless to say, that would include a mask and hand sanitizer. So the medical bag is an important piece of, uh, of I guess you'd say medical equipment that was used and is still used today. But you know, bags were always used for the healing of people. And when we talk about healing, First, a person needs to know they need healing. So a doctor needs to determine who their patient is. And if you don't go to a doctor, you can't possibly be healed. And you know, during Jesus's time, the scribes and the Pharisees were in great need of healing, but they did not know it. They did not recognize it. They were blind to their sickness and they were really unable to see the redemptive power that existed right in their own temple where Jesus was. And you know what? As long as we do not believe that we are sinners, we really cannot receive the cure that the great physician Jesus has for us. For only those that know that they need a cure will ever receive it. And in order for us to move closer to God, we first have to confess how far away we really are from him. As I mentioned before, Jesus is known as the great physician. He healed a lot of people, all who believed they could be healed by Jesus. They had faith in his divinity. The Gospel of Mark chapter 5 talks a lot about some of the miracles of healing that Jesus performed during his time on earth. You might recall the story of a legion, the demon-possessed man that was chained at the tombs. And then there was Jairus' daughter. And then there was the woman who had been bleeding for 12 years and simply touched the cloak of Jesus and was healed. And then Jesus knew immediately that someone had touched his cloak and that that miracle had occurred. You might also remember the one of the synagogue's leader he was the father of a daughter who had died. And he felt all was lost. And he told this to Jesus. And Jesus brought her back to life. And then Jesus said, don't tell anyone I did this. 
that is the Lord we serve. You know, it may seem like a long time ago. It was after Hippocrates, but still it was a long time ago. But Jesus still performs miracles every day. I like to think that he's in the heart surgery business because I truly believe he is. You know, and each of us need our own medical bag for spiritual and emotional health in order to maintain our relationship with Jesus. And, you know, someone asked me once, they said, Patty, what do you do? How do you keep yourself spiritually sharp? Well, first of all, I have to tell you, I'm not always really great at it. I struggle. I have to be disciplined. I need to perform spiritual disciplines. And for me, it comes in a variety of ways. Number one for me is prayer. You know, I I have to build my relationship with God. And just like a relationship with your friend or your parents, if you don't spend time with them, it's really not going to go anywhere. You're not going to be able to get to know your friend any better or get to know how your parents think or feel or what their childhood was like if you don't spend time in relationship with them. Same is true with our Lord. We need to spend time in prayer. And through prayer, God shows me this amazing cure that he has for my soul, and it's called grace and mercy. And he allows us to experience that when we commune with him, when we pray. You know, the other very important thing is for us to understand who God is, and the way we can find that out is through prayer and through his word. It is amazing to me that after all my years of following Christ, I still find his word to be incredibly revealing of who he is and also, therefore, who I am. Because as a daughter of the king, I truly am part of the Lord. I I reflect his love and his mercy. You know, I don't always use my Bible as a book. I love my audio Bible on my phone. And one of my favorites is the Audible Bible. And I just love to put my headphones in and to be able to listen to the word of God along with reading it. So that might be a good tip for you guys because I think I remember things better if I hear them and I see them. So that's just a tip I have. One other thing that I absolutely love, I probably am too much in love with this, is I love Christian music. And um, you guys may not even know what this is, but these are called CDs. (laughs) And before CDs, there were things called cassette tapes. Before that, there was something called A-track tapes. And you guys, I know I'm totally losing you. But these are CDs, and I do use them in my car. But more often, you know, I listen to my radio through my, through, I listen to music through my um, application, my app on my phone. My favorite, favorite ones are, I love Lauren Daigle, and I love Francesca Berestelli, and I really like Chris Tomlin, too. So whatever your favorite recording artist is, as long as they are elevating the name of Jesus, They'll help you. It'll help you have your spiritual armament ready. You know, it's really important to to be with the church and to be with your church family. How important are pastors' messages? You know, as they are anointed by the Lord to share his word and to help us to understand exactly what God wants to say to us. And I think that's a really important thing is for you to spend time listening to the sermons of your pastor. It's a little different these days. We've got to watch it on television. And I can't wait to get back and to be live in church. But until then, pastor's messages. You know, I also love to read books. Read books. Um, this one is by Winter and Jonathan Pitts about marriage. Now, I know a lot of you aren't married, but some of you are moms. And I love this book. And I love it not because of just what it says, but also who it's by. And because I know that these are Christ following people, I can trust the words in their books. So I think that's important. And then finally, but not to be forgotten, are Christian friends. It is so important that when you are concerned about a situation or maybe even you're scared during this time of this virus being unleashed on the world, to talk to friends about it and to talk to your parents about it. And for me to talk to my husband, you know, here I am, I've raised four kids. I have 
a, my family is 20 people strong, but yet it's just my husband and I here in the house. And so it's really different, but you need to be able to share your concerns with those around you, those you love. So friends are really, really, really important too. So I am guessing that a lot of people have other ideas on what would be really important to you in your spiritual medicine bag. But I had a simple idea too, that maybe you can make one at home. This is a spiritual first aid kit. Now I've got this box here and I've got these different symbolic items in my box. And this might be fun for you to do as a craft if you want and to remember our Medical Heroes Day, all right? So let me look in here. Oh, it smells good because I've got something that really smells good in here. I wanted to find first of all, oh, where is it? Certainly it's in here somewhere. Well, I don't see it right now, but I was looking for a safety pin. So a safety pin is to remind us that all our hopes and dreams are pinned to God's love and kindness. In Psalm 119.49, it states that. I also have in here a little rock. Now, my grandson, I said, I need you to find the coolest rock that we have in our, in our yard. And so he came back with this really cool one. It almost looks like obsidian or something. It looks really nice, right? But this rock is to remember to lean on the Lord Jesus, who is our rock. He is steady and strong to support us when we are sad or scared. And that's Psalm 18 too. And then in here, I have a pencil. And this is to remind me that my name is written in God's book of life. Having your name in that book means that you'll be in heaven one day. And that's Revelation 20, 15. I also was looking for an eraser um, because erasers, they change everything, right? You can take away a mistake that you made. Well, this is one of my favorite erasers, especially with nine grandkiddos, is this is one of those magic erasers. I know it's a little oversized, but this lets you know the size that God needed from my heart, right? And that is to tell me that my sins are erased because Jesus died on the cross and he made us clean and he gave us a clean slate. And that's 1 John 1, 9. You know, a piece of soap. Now this, oh my gosh. I wish we had a centimeter or something on this, on this video chat because it smells so good. This is a piece of soap. And this is because the Holy Spirit who lives in your heart after you receive Christ can keep you clean from sins. And that's Romans 8, 9. And then I've got in here this little square of aluminum foil. All right. This is to represent the shining armor that God gives each of his children to protect them from Satan. And you know, we need to armor up daily. We are called to do that. And we do that, remember, through prayer, through studying of scripture, through listening to worship music. Ephesians 6, 13, 17, check it out. It is about the armor of Christ. And this was tricky because I had to cut my hair. Now, some of you have great moms that are very brave and they might cut your dad's hair or even their own or even yours. I would never put a scissors to anyone's hair because it freaks me out, but I did cut my own only because I wanted to share with you guys that God knows every hair on our head. That means he knows everything about us. And you know what? He loves us anyway. So remember, check out Matthew 10 30 to learn more about every lock of hair on our head the Lord knows about. I then have a bandage here, and this is to remember that God can heal me when I'm sick or I'm hurting. He is the great physician. Check out Isaiah 61.1 for that. <laughs> and this is a penny. You know, it's sort of cool. Sometimes people think a penny show if, if, if it's found in an odd place that it's somebody that's gone to heaven is looking at you. I've heard that before, but this reminds me that God can supply every need I have from food to finance to a home. I don't have to worry. And that's Philippians 4, 19. And then finally a cotton ball, because you know what? 
we are promised in Revelations 1-7 that one day Jesus will return to earth riding on the clouds and he will have wonderful rewards for those that love him. So that's a spiritual first aid kit. And you can make one of those at home, which is pretty fun. And don't forget all the different attributes and, and ideas that, that I had around how to keep spiritually strong. And I'm sure you have many more ideas than that. So let's see. I wanted to mention one more thing. And that is really to um, remember to focus our prayers on those who are suffering mentally, emotionally, or spiritually during this time. And so it's really important to remember those that may not always be in our immediate memories, those that are a little bit um, disenfranchised is sort of a big word, but they're, they're in need of our prayers and that we wanna lift them up. And let's do that today. So this Medical Hero Week is full of fun activities. A lot of them your family can participate in with as well. And so we want you to encourage them. And don't forget about the daily prayer focuses. They are all in your um, study guide that you should know where that is. And also we encourage you to make these memorable times together. You know, consider every night this week that during your prayer time that you light a candle and remember our medical heroes. And then pray for those that are fighting the pandemic and um, remember to lift them up because it's tiring. Um, many of them are at risk of contracting the virus themselves, but yet they do this out of, out of love for others. You know, the other day I reached out to one of our past board presidents, uh, Dr. Chris Marzik, and um, his two daughters that were in AHG are both in the medical field. One is a doctor and one is a physician's assistant. And one is in the Connecticut area and she is doing the testing, the swabbing and all of that. And the other one is working in the um, Cleveland area and she is actually working with COVID patients. So there are so many girls that we don't even know about that have graduated from American Heritage Girls and are now serving in the medical field. And I pray that during your time in earning the medical badge and our our hero week that you might consider and pray and ask the Lord, is that the will that you might have for my life? How can I help? So make sure to share tomorrow that um, the different um, with, with your parents and with other people in your troops that they can join on at any time on medical heroes week, start to do some of the fun activities that are in there, how you're inspiring others through the chalk art or maybe window signs, or you're doing a scavenger hunt in your neighborhood or you're doing a teddy bear challenge, whatever it might be. Share that with others because we want to hear about that. And then Wednesday, you're not going to want to miss it. It's the Q and a with medical missionary, Dr. Alan Sawyer, from Samaritan's Purse. We are so excited about him coming and we are hopeful that you will choose to join us as well. So girls, it's been a pleasure to be with you. I wish I could see each and every one of your faces, but what I would love to do is to pray for you in closing. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you we thank you for allowing us to be in communion with you, the Lord of Lords and the God that we love and cherish, the Father of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for allowing this technology to work, Lord. We've enjoyed being together. And Father, I ask that you just put your hedge of protection around each and every girl on this call and beyond on her family, on her troop, on her volunteers and leaders that are leading her and mentoring her. And Father, I pray that your name be lifted high during this time, that people come back to you, Lord, if they have strayed, that they can learn the good news that your son has brought. And Father, we thank you for loving us. It's in the name of your son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. God bless you guys, and we'll see you on Wednesday. Bye now.